Hey TCS viewers, Chris Nichols here again from the camera store and today we have a very full review. We're looking at the Pentax 645Z, a camera that promises to be a very versatile platform with a very unique brand new sensor that also promises huge image quality gains. Now this is a big review, it's coming at you in two parts. The first part is going to be stills, we're going to test that in just a short while and then the second part is a very cool setup for the video capabilities of this camera. Yes. This this is a medium format camera with video capabilities. That is also a very unique thing. Is this camera all just a lot of hype and a lot of smoke or can it really perform? Without further ado, let's find out. Now when it comes to the overall feel and the handling of the 645Z, it feels a lot like the 645D. But on the back, it is getting a little bit more complicated. We've got more buttons here. Now a lot of people out there have complained about this. They find that it's maybe obnoxious or overly complicated. I actually don't mind it. I like the layout. I think the buttons are well spaced and they're easy to push. My only real complaint would be these quick buttons up here on top. We've got autofocus area moved over here instead of SD1 and SD2. I never use those SD buttons in the first place, but autofocus here I'm gonna use quite a bit. Maybe if they put a dimple on there so I could differentiate it without having to look, that would be a nice place. Otherwise, it's kind of alone there by itself. Still, it's a very good, very usable platform. It's got a solid weight, and again, incredibly good weather ceiling. This is the medium format camera that you can take out into the bush and be confident it's gonna come back in one piece. The only thing you gotta remember, the only real complaint is because it's medium format, it does have medium format weight. It's a big chunky body. Yeah, well, we're shooting the moon, and I know we don't have the lens for it, but maybe we have the megapixels for it. All right, now one of the key improvements on the 645Z is this brand new medium format CMOS chip. We're getting over 50 megapixels. We're also getting better dynamic range as a promise. We're getting better low light performance. We're gonna take a look at that in a bit. But the first thing I wanna to get to is just right into a res test. Now we're comparing against the D810. That's 36 megapixels, that's a lot. And another thing to keep in mind, this is shooting a traditional 3-4 ratio. Now, of course, the D810 is shooting a 2-3 ratio. And if I was to crop the Pentax down to match that exactly, our megapixels aren't that big a difference. So what we want really want to see is what kind of difference we're we getting in core sharpness. All right, so for this res test, we're shooting the 645Z with its 25 mil F4. Now we're gonna shoot at F16. We're not gonna get diffraction there, but we're doing that just to keep the depth of field equivalent. I'm gonna shoot the D800 more around F11 or so F10, just to keep things as equivalent as possible. We've got a nice composition here. We got that bridge out there. And what I'm doing here, if you take a look at the back of the screen, is I'm focusing by live view. Now, that's one of the new features on the 645Z, and it's fantastic because it gives us very precise zoom-in punch and magnification. I'm at 16 times magnification, and I can very clearly see that I'm focused in the right spot. Got our self-timer on. We're going to take a shot here, and that should be a good one. All right, now it's time to shoot on the Nikon for our res test, and we have the Nikon D810. This is the highest res, most modern full frame camera on the market, and I'm thinking it's gonna do a great job. Shooting here at F11, we're gonna do that same shot with the bridge, and again, I've got great live view focusing here to punch in on, just to make sure that we are on target here. All right, so we're evaluating the files here between the two cameras, and you know, the Pentax is the winner. We're, we're looking at the raw file here, and you know, one of the things we really like, first off, it's DNG. We love that, it makes it very convenient. But you know, as to be expected with the extra megapixels in this new sensor, we're just getting incredible detail, even at a highly magnified area. Now looking at the Nikon file here, it's very comparable. Remember, there's no aliasing filter at all in front of this camera. We're gonna get a lot of good sharpness. It's got a very impressive result as well, but I've gotta give it to the Pentax. That's gonna be the winner when it comes to overall detail. I'm using the brand new Pentax 90mm macro with shake reduction. So this is pretty crazy here. I'm shooting this handheld, 1000 ISO, and I'm gonna take a look at my photo here. This is at 60th of a second, and that's really way better than I would ever expect 60 second on a medium format lens. This is the world's first shake-reduced macro for medium format. 
Yeah, you know, there's there's an aesthetic to medium format with that large sensor. Yeah, other cameras can do it in a similar way, but it's just unique when we get to a sensor this big. And you know, all these needles and pine cone parts just falling in and out of focus is beautiful. You know, the camera handle's great too for this kind of shooting. Again, handheld with the shake reduction is a really unique thing to have on a medium format camera. I'm enjoying it. So as you can see, we've got very contrasty light behind us, and that would normally present pretty big challenge, but the Pentax 645Z has the dynamic range to handle it. This new sensor is fantastic, probably the best we've seen so far. I mean, looking at this file here, we've got plenty of detail in the blacks. The Pentax really does retain good shadow detail, and as we boost those up, we're you know, really not getting much degradation. Good highlight control, 14 and a half stops. It'll be interesting to see what the Phase 1 and Hasselblad do with the same sensor but either way this new generation this is really what you want for handling contrasted light okay so I've had some time to play with the autofocus here on this camera I've got a few thoughts first off autofocusing quality is very lens dependent the macro is quite slow you know the 55 is pretty decently quick the Pentax has a tendency to hunt it is not the fastest autofocusing you know compared to modern smaller SLR cameras of course but it's some of the best you're gonna find in medium format and when it does lock on it's very sharp that being said I've still found that I'm using manual focus quite a bit with that punching on the live view it's great and the live view autofocus, it's basically as quick as through the lens. So take your pick, whichever one you want to use better. I will say this too, I'm shooting right in the sun. The flare is so well controlled. I mean, say what you will about Pentax, they make fantastic coatings and very decent lenses. Pentax color and sharpness, well that's a controversial topic of conversation. Uh, a lot of people have panned Pentax cameras saying their files are flat and they're boring, the color's kind of weird, but first off, that's all subjective. Second off, Pentax files sharpen up beautifully and they don't do a lot of post-processing. They let you do that yourself the way you want to. You know, Hassi files and Phase 1 files, they've got a good punch and drama to them out of camera, but you can make the Pentax look like that too with a little bit of tweaking afterwards. Or even in camera, they're so customizable. The 645Z today, I've been really liking the color, it's been looking realistic. It is magic hour, so that doesn't hurt, but I'm confident you're gonna get nice files out of this thing. You know, when it comes to client use and, 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 you know, professional photography, commercial photography, people didn't like the Pentaxes because they felt without tethering and with the slow flash sync speed, you're not going to get great studio use. The flash sync speed is still pretty slow, I'll give you that. But you know what? You've got tethering support on the Zip for 5 z now. It's coming out. And uh, lenses, if they were to come up with some more leaf shutter lenses, some new ones, that could really make this camera a serious contender and a very versatile contender. And you can always hunt on eBay and try to find some used 75mm leaf shutter lenses, for example, and do a bit of work that way too. So in the future, with the right implementation for commercial work, well, let's not write off the Pentax 645Z too quickly. All right, so we're doing a detail shot here of the tree. You know, just this this lichen growing. We got a little ant there. I'm gonna catch him. And I gotta be honest with you guys, this is so nice to use. The 645Z handles so well here for a lot of reasons. First off, tilty screen, very handy. But more importantly than that, it's a really nice high res screen. And again, I can punch in here and find focus so easily. The other thing, mirror lockup control on the side of the camera, so it's gonna lock up the mirror before it shoots. Nice sharp results, I love that too. And the dynamic range, I got sunlight coming and hitting this thing, I've dropped down the exposure bit and everything's fitting on the histogram. This camera does this kind of stuff so well. All right guys, Pentax Canada wanted us to really test a new feature here. This is the 4K interval mode in their movie settings here. Now, I'll give you this, it has the calculator built in, you tell it how many frames you want, how much time, and it works out all the math for you. But honestly, if you've done grade four math and passed successfully, you can work out your own interval timing. Uh, it's in movie mode, so I can't go any slower than 30th of a second, and that's a big detriment. Sometimes it's nice to get a slower shutter speed for your intervals. That way, if we've got people walking and cyclists going through, uh, they'll just disappear with those slow shutter speed exposures as they move. You gotta remember too, I know 4K, that's the buzzword right now, but that's eight megapixels. So pretty much any camera that does eight megapixels with an interval timing setting, you can do 4K time-lapse. I mean, a Canon 20D with an aftermarket remote, you can do 4K time-lapse. So, uh, I don't know. I think I would just work it out my own, do my own math, and I could do even higher than 4K. I could do 50 megapixel time-lapse if I wanted to. It's getting dark out now. It's time to take a look at our high ISO test on this brand new sensor on the 645Z. 
I'm going to go ahead and say that compared to current 35 millimeter full frame SLRs, we're a couple notches above. I mean, this camera is delivering excellent results. A7S, we're up in that range. In fact, this camera might be even a little bit better considering you've got the resolution to punch up that noise reduction. Jordan and I looking at these files, we'd have no problem shooting these and printing these at least at 12,800 ISO. And again, you could push it further because of the extra res. The 645Z does cap out around 200,000 ISO. So yes, some other cameras will go higher, but this new crop of medium format sensors, it's fantastic and low light. And you gotta remember, that's a revolutionary change because traditionally they have been very, very poor. This makes these cameras even more versatile than ever. Well, this pretty much brings us to the end of our stills test. The 645Z though, it's given us some of the best image quality we have seen to date. Dynamic range, low light performance, overall resolution are all incredibly high. But it's not a complete review until we also test the video portion. So we're gonna do that next. But one comment that I'm gonna leave you guys with, the most important thing and the thing I loved about the 645D, it is so much fun to shoot and this camera is so much fun to shoot and that's a big deal. We'll see you in a bit. All right, so it's time to shoot the video portion of our test. And this is a very unique experience because you gotta remember the 645Z is pretty much the first medium format digital camera that shoots video. Now, in order to appreciate this, you gotta remember, I mean, when I was a kid, I remember seeing 70 millimeter films coming out like Ben-Hur and Patton, and they're going out to VHS, and VHS resolution left a lot to be desired but there was something about the aesthetic of that big frame. It was epic, you get very interesting depth of field, and now this 645Z is giving us that because we're getting a huge sensor, something we've never been able to shoot video on before. This is gonna be a very unique experience at this price point, and we're gonna do it with a very, very talented group of people. We're shooting with DDG, the Deluxe Design Group. So what we're gonna do is shoot a cool little movie trailer here with the 645Z, and we're gonna see if it can capture that unique look with that large sensor. Now, when it comes to video controls on the Pentax 645Z, it's a bittersweet story. To their credit, we've got some nice features like highlight indicator, focus peaking, we've got uh, punch in magnifier. These are great tools when shooting video. We also get 24 frame per second, 30 frame per second but we do have some issues as well. You don't get any of those focusing aids and highlight indicators when you actually start recording. Now this is a pain if you wanna refocus during a scene. You have no assistance whatsoever, so you're gonna to wanna to go to an external monitor. The 645Z, we're gonna try it out here. We're hoping it's gonna perform. Hopefully it doesn't let us down at all or too much. Okay, so while we combat West Nile virus out here, guys, um, so shooting the 645, doing this video, does it have then any special advantages? If we need something unique, is this camera giving us something unique? I think that large sensor is pretty interesting. I think there is some kind of a unique look there. I can't maybe put my finger on it, but I think that there is something, and I, I quite like the look. What do we hate about the camera? I think it's a bit of a problem not to see your true exposure mm. uh, until you start rolling. Yeah, I think that's probably the biggest thing right now. And I know the native ISO is 200 on the camera, and I'd I prefer to be trying to shoot in that native ISO, but yeah. you know we're starting to get up a, a little higher. Um, so the, I would say like a nowadays native ISO is being more in the 850, 800, right. you know, even 2000 and stuff. You know, it, it's it seemed it's a very low native ISO. But tomorrow night, I think we'll experiment a little more with camera movement. But tonight we had mm. a jib and the rest of the stuff was on tripod, fairly gotcha. locked off, fairly symmetrical shots. So tomorrow, there's a little more movement and we'll get to see, you know, rolling shutter and uh, how it reacts with that. All right, so day one shooting, that's a wrap. When we come back, we're gonna continue our 645Z video test. We'll see you guys then. All right, so we're back for part two, the continuation of our Pentax 645Z video test. Now keep in mind tonight, we're gonna to be doing more dynamic camera movements. We're gonna have it in these outdoor situations. We're gonna to get to see things like rolling shutter and how the camera handles itself in these more dynamic situations. Any SLR lens, photography-wise, it's infinity or seven feet. Right, so your focus poles are so close so it's together, like, very delicate. What is that? So it's, <laughs> you know, anything past seven feet, I have no idea. 
right so it's all by eye so you know then that's the the trouble with digital filmmaking in general is with film you'd be measuring flange distances with sure. every shot that meter sticks coming out for every shot now people just go yeah, yeah okay. let's roll it and that's it yeah <laughs> so it's it takes away a lot of the precision and, and the craft in my opinion I can promise you, you're not going to find cinema glass for a 6 or 5 <laughs> Pentax mount anytime soon. <laughs> Sorry. So it's starting to get dark out, right? So yeah, we've got yeah. a big sensor here, it's supposed to be good. What do you think about that? It's going to be interesting to try it out. I've, I've heard it maxes out at 3200 ISO, which uh, nowadays doesn't sound like a lot. No, it's true. Uh, There's it a lot of stuff like out there. That's almost base <laughs> ISOs nowadays. So, uh, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see what it can do in the lights. And I think. A little bit of this more rainy night is playing to our strengths, you know, it That's helps awesome. suit the mood of the, the piece and uh, it's made it darker out earlier, which is which is great for us as well too. Let's see how so, it goes. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you. We might have to hold for the rain for a minute. It's a good chance to check out the waterproofing of the camera. I was hoping it was going to rain a little bit. Many murders. Don't you get it? Get it? Get this. I'm your superior, Sergeant. Two cops. I don't get it. <laughs> That's why we're here, Inspector. Sergeant Black, please. All right, it's, it's all yours. Detective Blue. This is the third one, Inspector. Sergeant Black, Detective Blue. Black and blue? I get that. <laughs> That's why I put you two much together. It's hilarious. <laughs> Hardy, har, har. Yeah, your real card. One killer. Oh, cool it, man. Put that away, huh? You know what this is? Don't you get it? It's a... Uh, a, a portent. A sign. Prepare for the new age. The gates of consciousness are poised to swing open. Hold on. I'm gonna swing this open. You really don't get it. Get in. Hey! hey. That one killer is one of the cops. Black. Blue. Black and blue. All right, guys, so we are here back at the studios taking a look at the footage that you guys shot, and uh, you've had a bit of time to check it out. Uh, we're going to look at them, grade them, and, and tell us what you think. We're just kind of in the fine cut stage now, so we're just starting to look at color correction, but we're definitely seeing a few issues. Uh, we've seen some more in the uh, jacket here, and then in some of the uh, night shots that we got, we're definitely seeing some grain and uh, loss of detail in the blacks for sure. You know, definitely we maxed out the ISO of the camera at 3200. Yeah. It was interesting because that evening I felt like we, the image we were looking at on the screen, there was a lot more detail in those blacks and it didn't, right. it definitely didn't look as crushed like. 
What, what kind of data rate are we getting on that? I think we landed, it was about 17.5, 17.4, yeah. something like that. So right. even compared to an AVC HD codec nowadays in a C100 or FS700, a lot of other cameras uh, hmm. at 24, uh, you're losing some data there. On set, the image that we're looking at seemed to be different than what we brought back for sure. Mm -hmm. um, on set, it looked like we were getting lots of detail, lots of detail in the black, and I didn't see much grain at all. And I think all of us thought, wow, this looks really good. Yeah. Bringing it back, it was a bit different. The mm -hmm. other problem too was we were trying to record this externally, but the signal coming out uh, was not really usable. It was quite chunky looking. It almost looked like a proxy file. Yeah, I think it ended up being maybe a 720p yeah. signal mm -hmm. and uh, it just either was trying to up convert it within the recorder and, and it just had that almost SD to HD look. There was yeah. a lot of aliasing to it, like I said, almost uh, proxy file looking. So so that was unfortunate. We were hoping maybe you could get a little bit and kind of bypass that mm. H.264 recording. Yeah, maybe get better and, blacks, better mm, Yeah, overall. just be able to push it a little bit more. But, uh, it was also unfortunate a bit too, like, like you said, the image and that just that camera wanting to... It seemed like it was auto exposing the image to show it to you preview, but we wanted to see what we were getting. And, and so, uh, mm -hmm. as soon as you hit record it, obviously it would it would step down to what you were actually seeing. So there was a lot of times we just hit a quick record shot. Yeah. Okay, that's what we're getting, and then trying to expose to that. I remember you guys doing like, a clip every time yeah. just to yeah. just to preview your exposure. Yeah, yeah. So it was very slow, but even then when we were looking at the, actually recording and seeing the image it just it's mm. not what we're getting here now so that so that's the other thing even when you think okay we've got it in camera we're happy with it you get it in post it's not the same file that's it's yeah. basically impossible to, to work properly with that kind of yeah. uh, letdown so for workflow we transcoded everything all the h264 files into prores hq files okay. for the edit and hopefully be able to push it a little bit more mm. with the grade or have a little bit more to play with um, so looking at these right here, even with a, just a basic three-way color grade on it, um, this is the image for maybe after. Mm -hmm. um, we just started to push the saturation in. That's about halfway, and then all the way is there. You can start to see there's definitely a, a bit of stepping kind of yeah. in the, any of the gradiated areas for sure. It just starts to fall apart. Well, I guess then, you know, maybe we leave it at, uh, the Pentex hasn't been implemented as a video camera properly for this kind of work, but there's potential in the sensor perhaps, um, maybe something in the future to look at. That's how I kind of see it. I think there's definitely potential in the sensor, and I think this is, you know, the first crack at this. Sure. So down the road, I think this could develop into something interesting, but uh, there definitely needs to be some work. Yeah, there's some, there's some work to catch up, I guess, because mm, sure. this does feel like if you release this, uh, a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. you were kind of right in the cusp of what was going on at the right. time, but now it's like it feels a little dated, a little, dated, a little too late uh, with what they're doing. But who knows, again, with firmware, I, th I feel like if you have a good firmware team and you can really write and kind of push what that camera could do and you're dedicated to wanting to push toward video, I don't know if they're dedicated <laughs> to that market, though, right? Yeah, it's so it's, it's probably hard to say. Thank you for the opportunity, though. I mean, this was a great chance for us to do something a bit different, uh, to use Absolutely. a totally brand new camera system. It was a it was very interesting experiment, yeah. right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, the footage does look great. I mean, you guys shot it beautifully and uh, you lit it well. And so, yeah, I think uh, hopefully you get a good product out of this still. You bet. Yeah, thank yeah, you. It was a fun yeah, piece. Thanks so much, guys. All right, so that brings us to the close of our very lengthy but hopefully enjoyable Pentax 645Z review. On the still side, let me say this. It is probably one of the most fun cameras I've ever used. Uh, the image quality is probably the best that Jordan and I have ever seen so far on a camera. And, uh, you know, what I really like is that medium format cameras in the past, we bought them because they had the quality, but they were still a pain in the butt to use. And the 6 or 5Z is just versatile. The screen's great, it focuses well, it handles well. So there's really no downside. Uh, it's a great image quality platform. The only thing that I'm going to say about it, you know, five years ago, there was also a big gap between full frame quality and medium format quality. There was a lot of reason to go to medium format, even though it was expensive. Nowadays, cameras like the D810, whatever Canon is going to come with next, I mean, these are really closing the gap and maybe medium format's days are numbered. I don't know. As far as video, Jordan and I were really excited because we thought, wow, we might get a chance to see a very IMAX-esque kind of camera come out here. And unfortunately, the 645Z was disappointing in the video quality, the controls, you know, the, the workarounds, the workflow that, that it gave us, it wasn't ideal. So I don't think it's there yet. Versatility, great, but it's not gonna blow you away in video. Anyways, I'd like to say a huge thanks to the DDG group, Nick and Chris, Chantel, Brock, Brad, Mark. I mean, all these guys who helped us out, Jamie and Jeff, you know, they really brought it together, helped us out to make this experiment come true. And so for that, we are very, very grateful. 
If you guys are looking for a versatile medium format, I think the 645Z is the best you can get right now, especially for the price. And if you want a full frame SLR, well, that's a great choice too, guys. The gap is closing. Thanks so much. We'll see you soon.